Man, what can I say about Mario Armstrong? You're gonna see this conversation is like blowing you away with all the information you'll get in a short window of time. Uh, Mario is amazing. He's an Emmy winner. Uh, he's someone who's created his own television show. Uh, he's just it's just this guy who is the ultimate pent-ultimate creator today. Uh, and he was so grateful with his time helping people think about uh, their own paths, uh, which his has been really like interesting to observe. Uh, but three big takeaways from today's conversation. Number one, the focus on intent. Uh, a lot of times people think about their plan, not the most important thing, but sort of figure out your intention of what you want to do, what you want to be known for. What is that legacy you want? So pick your intent. If your goal is to be remembered as an author or remembered for the shows you produce, start with intent and then work backwards from there. Number two, find out what you're uniquely good at. And it's an exercise that I think Mario pushed all of us to do is spend some time asking other people, like what do they think are some of your best skills? And I think as specifically as writers, as storytellers, as creators, sometimes we sort of don't really know and have a good sense of what our best skills are, but ask, try to find those things you're uniquely good at. And once you find them, double down on them, continue that focus and really become world-class at it. And then lastly, and I think this is a great one for anyone who's in the midst of a book process, in the midst of some kind of a big project, is remember resilience. This idea of pushing through the hard parts isn't about just having resilience. It's about creating systems that build resilience. And what he talks about here is this idea of breaking things down into much smaller and accomplishable steps. So if you want to write a book, you don't just sit down and say, like, let me be more resilient to write the book. You break it down and say, how can I write? 50 words today and then 50 words tomorrow and then maybe 200 and 200. Like, think about these ways to really break things down into small steps. Mario is an amazing guy who I think, uh, you know, definitely follow him on social media. You'll learn something every day. I always do. Uh, and if you enjoy hearing from creators and authors and makers like Mario, uh, do subscribe to the Modern Author Show. Uh, this will help you learn uh, just as I do. And remember, the key thing to writing a book is never writing alone. Always remember there's people you can learn from, people who can help you. And most importantly, just focus on every day getting 1% better, and you'll be surprised at what you'll accomplish. Mario Armstrong, everyone. Your Instagram channel is your resume, right? Like, it's not just for you to, like, horse around. Like, fine, then come up with a different avatar to horse around with with your friends. But, like, mm -hmm. Christopher Armstrong on Instagram, you better be showing that you're a, a composer, that you write for, that you want to be a film, a writer for film. And mm -hmm. so, so let me see you playing your saxophone. Let me see you doing the keyboard. Like, everything is about showing what you can do mm -hmm. because what you, because there's no excuse now to create. Right. You, you used to need to be able to have access to get to something in order to prove that you could create something. Oh, I just need to get in the door. Now you don't. But we, we, we are locking ourselves out of opportunities because we still think that that's the case. So for me, it's, I need to see, uh, the first question I say is, can you show me what you've done? You're trying to think about like, what do you really want to do with yourselves? Where do you see yourself being? And how can you kind of create your own path? Like that's exactly what I, I kind of figured out along the way. And so I ended up calling it something and that was from free to fee. But really what it was, was about really taking steps consistently outside of the educational walls, if you will, and really trying to get the experience as much as possible in areas that I wanted to learn more in so that I could actually charge a fee. So to start, I was like, I wanna be on radio and television. Like I went to school for communications. And because of a crazy turn of events in, in my, in my um, undergrad experience, I, didn't end up fit, I did not end up finishing um, college. And <clears throat> it caused you know, this, this, this whole other way of me kind of like, well, what am I gonna do? Right. And then I and then I realized like, OK, well, even during college, I said to myself, I'm going to figure something out. I'm going to actually buy my own airtime. I saw an ad and I was like, host your own radio show. And I was like, OK, this sounds like me. I want to become a radio host. I want to be in TV and radio. So I found out when I get there, it's a little AM station in Annapolis, Maryland. This was like a little studio that let me paint the picture. This was like in a house that was like converted into a studio that had like a dish <laughs> in the backyard type of thing. And so um, I ended up having to buy the 30 minutes of airtime. And the only airtime they could give me was 1230 in the afternoon on a Thursday. Once people were listening and calling in and it was like working, I said, well, how do I get to a bigger outlet? 
And so I then call around FM stations. I have an AM demo yeah. that I can now give you. You put in the time and the energy and the passion to show a level of commitment about something that you wanted to do. From that point, it went to an FM station. And then I said, well, okay, I can do this. How about NPR? So, so, <laughs> then, I, so then I got to NPR and I was on Morning Edition as their tech contributor. And then the goal was always to get to television, right. but I found that I needed to go the radio route because breaking into TV was more difficult at that mm -hmm. time. I took the radio stuff I was doing and then went to the TV station and said, I want to do something like this, but do it week, day, uh, weekly on your network. And I'll do the technology segment every Thursday for free. I wanted to learn because I knew that I wanted to see myself on the Today Show yeah. or on CNN or yeah. on a big network. And in order to do that, I had to get the experience. So once I realized that this process worked where you can kind of build your own credentials in an on an on in an unorthodox kind of way by just taking some personal risk on yourself and really giving value to wh whoever it is you're trying to give value to. What did you learn about how to learn differently or how to learn faster? Understanding what you are really good at or what you have a passion mm -hmm. about and then really figure out how you can bring that unique thing to someone else so that it gives them value. I did this for three years strategically because I wanted to get to a bigger... A lot of times we see something we want or we desire and yeah. we minimize what we actually bring to the table and therefore it over it the the power of the leverage you give them way too much power not mm -hmm. understanding how much power you can actually bring to them being a really good human being like being nice to people like i would show up every thursday and bring the crew dunkin donuts hmm. so i'm not only not getting paid i'm now spending money <laughs> every I was right. being appreciative that I was on the air. You get in and you've gotten in. Now it's your job to try to figure out a personality or two that you could say, I really respect what you do. How did you push through those times of when it's like three years and like nobody's sort of picking up the phone yet? Being clear as to what your intent is. Like, what do you really want to accomplish? The way that you beat the times when you're knocked down or people are saying no is that you constantly are taking very small steps. Hmm. Or towards the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And if you have an opportunity where you can work on a project or intern for someone or, or put in some hours for free for somebody, even if it's just a couple hours a week, make try to your best to make sure it's in the industry of the area you want to go into. Hmm. And so, because what you're trying to do is align everything that you're doing, even on the small steps with what the bigger picture is. So your Instagram channel is your resume, right? Like, it's not just for you to like horse, like, fine, then come up with a different avatar to horse around with, with your friends. But like mm -hmm. Christopher Armstrong on Instagram, you better be showing that you're a, a composer, that you write for, that you want to be a film, a writer for film. So let me see you playing your saxophone. Let me see you doing the keyboards. There's no excuse now to create. Right. You, you used to need to be able to have access to get to something in order to prove that you could create something. What websites have you built? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, uh, seriously, like ask someone for free to do it. We just want to see that you actually care about something enough that you've actually created something on your own without <laughs> anyone asking you to do it. <laughs> What's the end goal? What are the chapters, I think? So um, th these are all very small steps. Yep. And so the first thing is, well, what's my table of contents? You're like at it every single day. Like yeah. I've only come up with two chapters. You still got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Like you can come up with more chapters later. But the idea is that you just keep coming back to doing some action and then you look up and then you realize that you've hit um, a certain goal. That will take the 12 months or the six months. And then I will look at what needs to happen in that month. Mm -hmm. And then I will say, okay, in order for me to hit that goal for that month, what needs to happen each week? So mm -hmm. it really is breaking down in a very painful way. <laughs> <laughs> the smallest steps possible. The only thing that prevents procrastination and the only thing that I've seen really work towards resilience is consistent action. How did you get that first set of people to come into the audience there of that sort of the, this unknown show? What yeah. do you get excited about? What, yeah, what, totally. what moves you? What, where are you trying to go in your career right now? What's the most important skill or project or thing you could acquire for yourself right now? What would bring the most value to you for, in working for someone right now? It's about understanding what hole I can fill for you with what right. I have available. Reed Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn, he always tells people, he has this amazing question. He says, 
Uh, I want you to do a tour of duty with us for two years. What's the next job you want after this one at LinkedIn? Oh, Which is amazing, right? That's because a what great he says, question. Like, what skills can I teach you in these two years that will wow. make you valuable for the next one? And like, it takes an extreme amount of confidence, but also what he said is that people now don't leave. That they can be proud of that shows people their commitment it shows your future hires, your future bosses, your future partners, your future investors, your future collaborators. It shows them your commitment. You created your own demo reel and whatever it is, whatever that thing is, your demo reel is super powerful. And however it is, um, that's the thing. Like, and I always tell people, unless you have proof of it, you probably didn't learn it. It didn't happen. I think that's what, yep. you know, AM radio at 1230 every day or every Thursday is your <laughs> proof of it. <laughs> like today it builds, it compounds in so yeah. many ways. It's so true. It's so true. Don't just believe in yourself. Um, find supportive people. You have to continue to push forward no matter what anybody else is saying. We are in a society where we are addicted to other people's validation. Start really working on that by reminding yourself that you are coming at this from a really great place of positive intent and constantly coming back to your center, which is that why. A chef that really wants to start to get classes and do other things, and, but they have no experience as a chef. They haven't been in a restaurant before, but they can cook their butt off at, and their family loves their recipes and all that stuff. That chef just needs to turn on the camera and just start saying, I'm trying Trying out some recipes. This is what it should be. It's, it's just, I'm trying, I'm growing, I'm developing, I'm learning, I'm studying. These are the words that you say that tell people that you are committed to an area, but in, in an area that you may not yet be an expert in, but because you're saying I'm committed, I'm studying, I've researched. When you start doing that more evidence-based documenting style with what you're doing, you get more credibility to follow you along the way because you're not just spitting stuff. You're actually also backing that up with some evidence. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, do you have a way that you just shake out that imposter syndrome like that? That's really reliably works for you. Um, that's a great hack. Um, visual visualization is usually the best thing for me. Really just visualizing a previous one or a previous accomplishment or something that was very challenging that I did overcome. 85% of the things that we worry about, 85% do not come true. We spend a lot of times in our head, a lot of time in our heads and in our thoughts about things that won't even happen. For the 15% that it does come true, that their worst case scenario, we go straight to the cliff edge of what could possibly go wrong. Out of those 15% where they said it actually did come true, 79% of them realize that they had enough resilience to get past it. Don't right. allow your ego to make you feel like you're so important that it actually matters what other people say. Constantly put yourself back into the importance of the work. And the right. impact Purpose. that you want to have. I'll talk to you all soon. Take all right. care. Thank you, guys.